everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I, I got my good old friend Jolene with me on this exciting Tuesday. Hello. Unless this is going up on a Thursday then it's, it's an exciting Thursday or some shit like that. I don't know how days work anymore. Is time even real? I don't know man. Or is time just an illusion to keep us sane? I've been watching too much Gravity Falls. You can you can clearly see yeah. it. <laughs> uh, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. You sent me fifteen edits of Lord yesterday. Well, who else am I still? Uh, Fuck it. No, and next time I'll send it to Sage, and they're like, um, at least it's not the fucking weird Italian men. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Uh, Honestly, at least I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that it's not those guys I'm, or the or the TV men. Yeah, I, I moved on from Mr. Puzzles and SMG Thank 3 God. and 4 Thank and God. started my sending you old man. <laughs> my, my prayers were answered. Oh shit, did I- I don't think I told you this. Um, there was- there was a song that was been trending on TikTok for a little bit called 10 Drunk Cigars. So, 10 Drunk Cigarettes. I don't know if you keep seeing it, but it's really catchy. I've only seen it once. Yeah. I kept having it, but I couldn't remember the name of the song. I thought it was like 10- 10 things I need before a man or some long ass title like that so I was like hey Cameron can you look it up he couldn't find it I'm like ah oh, shit well I know a TikTok that I that I liked had it so can you just go on my TikTok and look through my likes and he scrolled through every oh, single God. one of them and <laughs> like, like seven in a row we're just four to end. he's I, like I feel like I'm so picky with my like and then <laughs> he was like can I ask um is the song in any of these, um... And he didn't even get to finish before. I was like, no. And he's like, oh, thank God. I feel like I'm getting autism from looking at this. <laughs> and they found it, and it was great. I didn't realize that the song was AI, though. So it made me a little sad. <laughs> but it's okay. Mm. But yeah, now, now Cameron knows <laughs> about the old man. <laughs> and it's Wow. Not don't worry, I'll, I'll get into fanfiction. Maybe when the wheel lands on my choice again, we can read a, a Stanford X-Reader. I know it would make you proud. <laughs> that, that's a word. Proud? Hey, it- you know, it could be worse. I, I could. It could- it could be worse. It, it really could be worse. And and to be honest, I'm- I'm- I'm fine with that. Alright, see? It's a middle ground. <laughs> but anyway, we're on Baluigi. Uh, I remember us having a great time when we last read this, to my memory. Was, uh, it was, uh, we had a Phoenix Wright parody of Bowser about to get the fucking death penalty. And then Luigi's like, wait, stop, I, wh I have a confession. And they went to the little, like, ch like the chambers where, like, the judges. And then Luigi's like, uh, y you probably, like, shouldn't kill him because, like, he has a son. And, like, he could just, like, uprise. And, like, you just had the whole problem all over again. And they're like, ah, shit. Who the fuck, who the fuck made it with this guy? And then they're like, okay, I guess, what should we do with him? And Luigi said, C community service. <laughs> And Thank it was you, Luigi. great. <laughs> Luigi. Oh, shit. Fly high, my king. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we're on chapter 9. Do you wanna- What? Wait, why did you say fly high, my king? I don't know. I was just saying words. I don't think it made it sense, You're not dead. <laughs> you don't know how this story ends? They could die! <laughs> this story has- 44 chapters. Yeah, and I they doubt could die. either of them are dead. This could be angst with a sad ending, you know? Star this could be a traditional Star Crush Lovers where they don't end up together, but they want to and they die at the end of it. Or one of them dies. Anyway, do you want me to answer that? Uh, you know what? Surprise me. What are you oh shit, what are you okay, you know what? You're always picking. I'm gonna be heads, so if heads I'll go, tails you go. Oh fuck. Oh wait! It landed perfectly on my thigh! Tails. <laughs> <sighs> the air fizzled with anticipation. 
the Allied Council and the Mario Brothers waited for Princess Peach, Princess Peach to finish some paperwork. A few smiles and smirks were present at this tiresome trial was almost over. Besides, the ruler found the verdict amusing. They could not wait for the public announcement. And on a more serious note, the royals wanted to return home and care for their people. Dramatically, the toadstool princess placed her pen down and clapped her hand. The centerpiece of the floor opened up. Bowser rose from the depths, looking even more am annoyed and angry than before. Rivets of steam floated around him. A servant reached for the muzzle, but Peach stopped them with a raise of her hand. That won't be necessary. I would like to give him a chance to speak, she said. Their servant obliged. Bowser narrowed his eyes, hissing quietly as he scanned the room. The baffled king must be wondering why everyone seemed so cheery. It was rather unsettling, basically. Peach stood up. After some deliberation, the council is ready to deliver the verdict. She announced. Kings, queens, and other monarchs hummed in agreement. Bowser snorted smoke but said nothing. The brothers sighed quietly, grateful they don't have to engage the Kuba in combat again. Peach held her hands before her lap. King Bowser Koopa, for your crimes against the Allied Kingdom, you are to reconstruct all seven kingdoms and bring them back to their former glory, she said. Huh? Peach held her head high. Correct. As part of your sentence, you are to mend all that you've broken, she explained. It is our newest and most effective sentence. Community service. Bowser's chains went slack, along with his jaw. If it weren't for the fact that everything said and done in the courtroom was annotated, they would laugh at the absolutely god-smack god expression on his face. The brothers exchanged a look and nodded, pleased that they had found a peaceful yet constructive solution to the problem. Luigi was most pleased with all the outcomes. Bowser looked at him. One could almost see the gears turning in his head. Peach went on a speech about rehabilitating and entering an era of peace, and how she hoped this would help Bowser reflect on the era of his ways. But despite the moving words, the king was not paying attention to one single word. His full attention was captivated by the human in green. Yeah, he's looking at his future boyfriend. <laughs> future, future, like, print, like, Oh, king you of mean the... you, his, what? here, you mean his future sad, de de deceased lover, as you were saying that this yeah. will all end up in angst and all for naught? Yeah. <laughs> what you you're telling me you never got an answer you're like man i just want to feel sad and you look up angst with an unhappy ending you're telling me yeah, you never done uh, it <laughs> yes but you you get a sinking feeling from the get-go really? that you know what you're getting oh well if you understand like you know like the plot oh. like if you already like if you if you get the vibe you know and like in the words and the in the in the vernacular used throughout the the fake like you sort of know what's gonna happen. It's like that gut feeling when everything's gonna go wrong. Gotcha. Okay. Did you did you get any of that in the, when we first read? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Never mind then. False alarm, guys. Put the angst away. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get them later, but yeah. For now, we go back in the box. <laughs> Why would a former hostage speak on his behalf or even aid him? Did this human want something from I'm sorry. Yeah, he, he wants something, all right. No, 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 no. I just got a message, that's all. And it's, oh. oh my god, they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. Uh, <laughs> and with that said, we did not truly get a move on. Now, Peach clapped her hands. What kingdom should be first? I called dibs on being first. Everyone turned their attention to King Boreas. He stood up on the counter with his flippers in the air. Even Bowser looked surprised by the patriarch informality. The Penguin King guessed slightly, then looked at the council. King Boreas quickly took a seat and adjusted his crown. He, he cleared his throat. What I meant to say is, I request my pink. I request my kingdom to be restored, he said. Princess Daisy quirked an eyebrow. And why is that? I have four kingdoms that are still burning, she shouted, shooting a glare at the king. With all due respect, Crown Princess, my kingdom was at the front lines of the assault. My men were decimated by enemy troops and my kingdom's walls were meddled down by the king himself. Bowser shot up. The hell? That's bullshit and you know it. Order! 
Zip it, Pinky. What the bird says is a lie. I didn't lay a single claw on him. Enough! The two kings ceased their bickering and avoided the princess's angry gaze. Toast to the ruler side and massaged her temple. The kingdoms will be reconstructed in order by their severity, she said. The Snow Kingdom shall be first, but not at, the not at the request of their king. Instead, it is because of the severity of their damage reports. King Boreas looked down, his face turning a rosy pink. Meanwhile, Bowser snapped his jaws and growled and growled but said nothing. Then, the four kingdoms of my dear cousin's empire. Ha! Fuck you, lizard breath! <laughs> the odd Daisy. Daisy! <clears throat> Followed by Kong Country. Whooping came from the representative of the chief Pinky Kong. And finally, the Yoshi Isle. No one saw any objection to that order. While King Boreas was hyper, hyper, hyperbolizing the damage to his army, the harm done to his kingdom was truly dire. Besides, the council was used to, was used to the Penguin's dramatic tendencies, so secretly appeasing him made their lives easier. Everyone began to gather their belongings, but the princess stopped them. One last thing, everyone, she said. The other rulers gave her a puzzled look. Princess Peach motioned to the Super Mario Bro Super Brothers with her hand. Mar and Luigi will be in charge of security, ensuring that King Bowser is behaving and going through with his sentence, she said. Mario pumped his fist. Of course we will, princess. After all, we're the only ones who could put the king in his place. <laughs> yeah, you can put the king in his place. I'm sorry. That's Mario. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Luigi replied with incoherent mumbling and trembling. Hmm. It would seem no one told him about this part of the plan. Poor guy probably thought it would be the last time he'd have to interact with Bowser directly. Well, the last time they would ever have to, they would ever interact would have been when he returned Junior to his custody. But Faith had other plans. Peach beamed at his response. Marvelous. In two days' time, the Darkland army and the Super Brothers will set course for the Snow Kingdom, she said. With those words, the trial ended. Everyone, except for the accused and one terrified Luigi, rejoiced. Mario clapped a hand on his brother's back, oblivious to the latter's pale complexion. As the happiness reverberated through the room, King Bowser was lowered back into the dungeon. However, before he did so, he gave one last look at Luigi and nodded his head. The plumber gulped, unsure if that was a look of gratitude or some form of threat. Sadly, Luigi did not get a chance to ponder, to ponder over this as he was dragged out of the courtroom and pulled into a nearby ballroom. How dare they? How dare they? You are King Bowser, powerful ruler of the Darkland, general of the Koopa Troop, Reach Kamek. How dare they make you do something as, as demeaning as uh, Bowser's side. Community service pop. The royal advisor flailed his arm. Yes, that! We are victims here, not him. Not them. Who has endured centuries of unavoidable misfortune? We did. Gamut, calm down. You're getting your blood pressure up. <clears throat> the utterly Koopa squawked, then crossed his arm. Bowser wrinkled his muscle in disgust. The smell of this dungeon was making him sick. He just wanted to get a sun, sun and go home. If having to play Peach's game, just so be it. Kimmich adjusted his broken glasses. Her maliciousness. How can you be, not be angry? A blood vessel throbbed in, Bowser, in Bowser's temple. Trust me, Kimmich. If it weren't for the fact that Junior's in this damn castle, I'd be tearing it down brick by brick. He bellowed. In their rush to celebrate, the council as well as the Super Brothers forgot to re-muzzle him. He could try to melt the chains right now and find his beloved son, but things were different. Even though he truly wanted to destroy the Toadstool Palace, Junior was safer within its walls and in the care of the, in the care of Greeny. And besides, his people were safe. It sucked that they had to help him with his sentence, but at least his kingdom avoided being raised. Bowser tried not to think about how humiliating this was. But it was challenging. A king admitting he was wrong? Never. He will never admit it. For he was justified. He'll just do what her pinkiness said. Minus the whole rehabilitation bullshit. 
This punishment is going to pass by quickly. The Koopas were masters at construction after all. Hell, the floating fortress was built in three days. Bowser bet he'll be done in, in a month's time, and once he's done, fine. He'll stay in his damn kingdom. If no one wants him around, he'll be happy to oblige. Not like these losers are worth the company anyway. Except... Except for Greeny. Oh my god. Catching feelings already? Oh my god, catching eyes in the courtroom? <laughs> that man- that man saved his son. Yeah. I get it. They need to get married now. <laughs> Stop being impatient. I'm sorry. Low burn. <laughs> Wanna? <laughs> Oh well, this is what happens when you let me choose a pick. You're yeah. gonna have to wait 44 long chapters. Oh, this is gonna be like the One Piece. We're, we're it's gonna keep going. Oh god, I hope so. <laughs> that is one confusing guy that Bowser really needed to figure out before leaving. After all, he was taking care of his son. Plus, you want to know why his son sounded so fond of him in his little letters? The kid probably doesn't know Luigi was one of the reasons he was here in the first place. Whatever. He has a month to figure him out. So for now, Bowser's going to sit here and behave. He'll decipher what messed up game the little man was trying to play. Oh my god, decipher? Like, Bill Cipher? From uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It's, it's a little bit of a brain rot <laughs> right now. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> and you need to consume things without letting them rot your brain. I'm sorry. <laughs> I literally saw on Twitter, someone was like, Hey, just wanted to show off my Hasman Hotel slash Hello Bots collection. Here it is. And they like had like a whole shelf of like the standees and like little things and like the little keychains. I'm like, oh, this is cute. Saw the Vox Sandy. I'm like, all right, so we got to find where this guy lives and murder him for, the <laughs> for this Vox Sandy. I'm deranged. I'm just so crazy. <laughs> I have issues. Yeah. Why do you gotta say it like that? <laughs> I mean... I was kind of rude. Am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, you're not. <laughs> Makes me a little sad. <laughs> that you're not <laughs> wrong. Makes me a little sad. Yeah, that you're right. <laughs> well, look. That is not <laughs> a problem. <laughs> I have the authority to deal with. Yeah. It'll be okay. I tell myself in the mirror. But I know deep down it will not be okay. <laughs> Alright, what the f- what? Oh yeah, chapter 10, beginning journey. You, you think Bowser and Luigi are gonna bond during this? Ubu? No! Okay. <laughs> I said bond, like, get to know each other! Not- They're probably fuck. just- <laughs> Bowser's probably just gonna observe him and be like, what the fuck is this man up to? Yeah, and Luigi just, uh, gets scared by his own shadow, he's like, this guy's pathetic. <laughs> Jeez, these people like to party. Luigi milled around the refreshments table, half-heartedly nursing a glass of wine. He watched as the rulers danced and talked as if the events were merely hours ago. Uh, mere hours ago did not transpire. Luigi understands that they have lived in fear for three decades now, but it's a bit early to celebrate, at least in his eyes. Kingdoms were still left in crumbling heaps, and a lot of organizing needs to be done, and well... The human just thinks a little more decorum. Decorum? Decorum. Decorum. What does decorum mean? <laughs> uh, it's like you don't remember the other day where we no. were we were at Cracker Barrel and I told you, dude, have some decorum. What the? Like the? It's like, like behave, act right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you chewing with your mouth open. Oh! Dude, I was a mess. <laughs> I'm always a mess. <laughs> Decorum could be used. Shouldn't they get ready to return home? Moreover, they haven't even discussed how Bowser and his troops were getting to each location. It was like they were winging it. Party now, figure out things while hungover. Luigi sighed. A lot of things seem to be irking him. Uh, learning more about the war made him question things, but at the same time, he felt like he had no right to do so. He was only present for the end of it. Luigi didn't have the full scope of things. And, on an unrelated note, he believed Peach was wrong for giving them these positions. 
The twins had never been around or involved in high-class society. They were as humble as they can get. Moreover, Luigi and Mario were no were near qualified for such an occupation. And how the hell are they suddenly experts at subduing the Koopa King? They fought him once, just once. Luigi looked outside the window and jumped slightly. The sun was almost down. Junior still hasn't had dinner. The green plumber put his now empty glass down and briskly headed towards the snack table as casually as he could and began to prepare a plate for himself and the dark prince. He was at- he's getting out of here. Luigi had not liked the big crowds. It was more comfortable in Junior's company. He glanced at the dance floor and saw Mario dancing with the princess. The sight brought familiar and bitter feelings back. His brother has always been more of the social twin. And then I got to a scroll. Luigi was content on being the one who steps back. However, sometimes he wished others would do the same instead of acting recklessly. The green twin discreetly walked towards the exit and slicked away. Meanwhile, Mario and Peach took a break from dancing. The princess laughed, enjoying his presence. Relief present on both their face. They, had, they were glad the trial was over and were all out of that stressful room. Mario leaned on a pillar. So glad we're on that the right path, he said. Princess Peach beamed. I agree. Then she rested her chin on her hand. I do hope this doesn't overwhelm you all. The red-clad hero took a sip of his drink. Not at all, princess. As plumbers, we sort of become a jack-of-all-trades. Construction is nothing new to us, he replied. Peach hummed an understanding, happy to be in the company of such a one- Oh, uh, uh, I was adding shit. I was about to say a wonderful man. I, I'm already, s like, shipping these two. I mean, they're canon, but... <laughs> <laughs> to be around such a kind man. Mario was uh, comforted by her endearing com compartment? Comportment. Comportment. What, is that just another way of saying company? Uh, it's like disposition. Oh. I think. See, Jolie, I get smarter every day. <laughs> <laughs> the Toadstool Princess tapped her glass. Well, I do hope you enjoy your time exploring the kingdoms, even if it's mostly business. We'll be able to tour the kingdoms. The royal, the royal tittered at the hero's excitement. The other council members are very excited to meet the great heroes from Earth, she commented. The fact spoke for itself. The moment Peach revealed the brothers would be escorting Bowser from kingdom to kingdom, the council members practically trampled over each other, offering to show them showed the twins their kingdoms. They cited all matters of reasons and benefits, truly showing their excitement. It would seem that the brothers had become famous. Everyone wanted to congratulate them on their endeavors. Moreover, this world was their home, allowing them to explore and learn about the rich cultures that would help them adjust. Plus, Peach recalled the ecstatic twinkle in his eye during their travels. While Mario was worried sick about his brother, he could not deny the feeling of of awe that washed over him during their journey. <clears throat> also, I want to point out, like, this this person wrote this, bef like, just based on the trailer and some of the shit on the Mario movie before the Mario movie came out. They got it- When did the Mario movie come out? Uh, I want to say two years ago at this point? I want to say? I feel was it a year ago? Uh, it was April- what? April 5th, 2023. Okay. So this chapter in particular is February 7th. So we don't really get past the Mario movie till chapter 14. Like okay. the, the release of the Mario movie. I gotta say, they did a good job. Like This this captures it pretty good <laughs> from what happened in the Mario movie. She heard Mario sigh, catching her attention. The man looked outside, seeming consent at the, content at the sight. Peach turned around to face the smiling hills and wonderful buildings that make up her home. She will forever be grateful if they were spared from the destruction, but sym sympathetic to those who are not so lucky. Peach tucked a strand of her hair behind her ear, readying to speak, but was interrupted by the sound of heavy footsteps. Queen Bean approached her, turning a sniffer... A s hold on. Is it sniffer? Fuck. <laughs> 
churning a sniffer of glowing brandy within her large grasp. I'm assuming she's got a thing of alcohol in her hands. <laughs> Honestly. A snifter. Hmm? A snifter. What's a snifter? Uh. It's, I feel like it's a type of glass or something. It's a fancy glass. <laughs> or it's a decanter. Ooh, we're using big words. <laughs> yeah, it's a type of glass. I'm learning so much. Th this book expands my vocabulary every time I read it. It's like it's like learning vocab words and then having to use them in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Mario put his hand on his chest and bowed. The muscular monarch returned the sigh of res returned the sign of respect. The man excused himself and walked away. You did well, Princess Peach, said the queen. Princess Twi- Princess twisted her glass. Thank you, Queen Bean, for your words and for coming all this way for support, was her response. Queen Bee chuckled softly. Simply because my kingdom is not ransacked like the others does not mean I, could, I should not be involving myself, she responded. My star daughter asked for my guidance, and I fully intended to provide aid. Queen Bee patted her head with a, with a soft smile and complete control of her strength. Peach leaned against her hand, her smile growing. The elder monarch laughed once again before withdrawing her hand. The young mushroom princess was pulled back from her starlight bathing, or bathing, the day that was that she was placed beneath. Wait, God, <laughs> I don't know why my fucking brain had a stroke. Hold on, the day she was placed beneath the power star and blessed with her gifts. There we go. I can do. I re I can read, guys. <laughs> Not well, but I can. Queen Bean has been present that day and named her Star Mother as she was the closest ally to her parents and her best friend. And, to this day, she has upheld her oath to her late parents that she will guide Peach to becoming the best ruler she can be. Peach was so happy she could, she could make it to the trial. Her presence stabilized her nerves. Suddenly, a blur of movement... Uh... Piquid? Perquitted? Peaked. Oh, God. that's how you spell peaked? Oh, wait, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm at the wrong part. Oh. <laughs> it's P I Q U E D. Yeah, that's peaked. That's peaked? No. Oh. Yeah, that's peaked. Oh. <laughs> so I, I thought it was I, the I, wrong part. I didn't know that's how you spelled it. I'm learning so much. <laughs> A blur moment piqued her in her curiosity. She caught the last moments of Luigi as he exited the ballroom. It looked like he was carrying something. As Peach was not the only one to notice this, she watched from a distance as Mario turned his head towards the door and swiftly followed, quietly excusing himself as some of the guests tried to get his attention. Peach placed her glass down. Pardon me, Queen Bee. Something has come to my attention, she said. Her star mother nodded and turned her head as she savored her beverage. Peach grabbed her skirt and exited the ballroom, stopping to tell the toads to cut the f the influx of alcohol before stepping through the doors. She paused for a moment, listening to the sounds of the footsteps. The princess had sensed other sets of footsteps much further ahead. That must be Luigi. He's heading to his room, she thought. Peach opted to follow slowly, curious of the brother's behavior. XXX. <laughs> Luigi reached his bedroom and quickly twisted the this is a signal before stepping in. Oh, and whistled. God damn it. <laughs> what did I even- I didn't say whistled, but what the fuck did I say? I already forgot. You think God stays in heaven because he too <laughs> is afraid of what he's created? <laughs> Junior emerged from under his bed. Luigi! The man in green smiled. Hey there, uh, Ometo? Ometo, or some shit. I'm gonna think that says little one in Italian. I'm so sorry it took so long, he said. The man ruffled his hair. He squatted down and showed him the plate of food with a smile. Junior cheered and wagged his tail. The two sat down on the floor, using the bed as a back support. This has become common. 
God damn it. Come on, <laughs> customary! Customary! I'm it. sorry, I just- I just looked up Ometo, and it's like another word for, like, bambino. It's uh, like little man. Uh, I, <laughs> so I was right, it was like, it was like little one. <laughs> uh, it was making common- com Fuck, I just said it. Customary! For them, at this point. Junior grabbed a sweet bun and paused. He ripped the pastry in half and offered it to Luigi. Ah! <laughs> His caretaker beamed at the gesture and, and gleefully took the offer. Junior inhaled his part. So, what's going on with my dad? He asked. Luigi put his plate down. I, I actually have some good news for you. Your dad's gonna be let go. Really? The little boy jumped up so fast his plate had gone flying and had Luigi, Luigi not grabbed it. Junior jumped up and down, shooting small sparks of flames into the air. His eyes tr crinkled as he smiled. This is the happiest he's been he's ever seen him. It was even making the high pitched laser beam noise. Oh. Oh, he was even God damn it. <laughs> Luigi lifted gent God damn Luigi gently lifted him. Up, up, up. But here's the catch. So, my dad's free! I can see my dad again! He squealed. Luigi sat him on his leg. Oh. I can't imagine any alternative. Like, they execute Bowser and, like, this little boy is just left without a father. Womp womp. That'd be so sad. <laughs> Luigi sat him on his leg. Yeah, that is true, he stammered. Uh, but before your dad can go home, he's got to fix everything he broke and say that he's sorry. Junior's smile slowly fell. Luigi patted his shell, careful to avoid the spikes. I know it sounds bad, but it's the best decision, he stammered. You also get to explore the kingdoms. But the rulers are mean. I don't want... I don't want to see their cruddy kingdoms. Luigi bit his cheek. He wanted to say so many things. That Bowser was wrong, the kingdoms were really nice, and Junior should give them a chance, but he was in a position to do so. Furthermore, the situation was much more complicated. Even Luigi had a hard time grasping the politics of everything. Junior, Junior was raised to see his kingdom as a recipient of injustice, and in a way, there was a kernel of truth in that. Who was he to ob oblige... Obliviate. Dang, obliviate. Ob obliviate that. However, Luigi's heart breaks at the thought that Junior learns to hold grudges at such a young age. Junior's a very good kid, even if his environment was not the best. He has a bright personality and great potential, and even more so, he shows Bowser. It shows Bowser isn't a monster when makes him a bee. The human gently took his tiny claw. Have you ever been to the other kingdoms? He asked. Junior looked up at him. No. Aha! Uh -huh. Then how do you know they're cruddy? Asked Luigi. The prince blinked. Well, I heard my dad and grandpa talk about them. Luigi booped his snoot. Aww, you little boop. <laughs> <laughs> boop, 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 boop. He's so cute. I love him. <laughs> you can't make an opinion if you don't know enough, he said. Then suddenly he hoisted the prince into the air, causing him to break into squeals and giggles. This is so fucking cute. <laughs> I'm gonna break something. <laughs> it's like no. that cute aggression where it's like, oh my god, this is so cute. Uh, I just want to fucking strangle uh, it. <laughs> so sweet. I love, I love the bite. <laughs> Luigi chuckled and placed him down. At home, we have an old saying. Chito Saskia Chiodo. You better tell me what that fucking means. <laughs> Dude, I'm not even Italian. I would go... <laughs> Gotcha, Kyodo. Or something like that. I don't know. I butchered everything. <laughs> I don't know. I can't say you butchered it if I can't even know what I'm I don't even know what I'm saying. Someone tell us what it says. Actually, you know what? The comments might tell us. Hold the on. Comments don't say anything. Oh wait, never mind. Does it mean... Oh, it means one uh one nails drive out the other. Huh, okay. Junior lightly punched his chest. I don't know that much Italian, you know. All I know is how to say hi in my name. Luigi couldn't help but laugh at his reaction. The man smiled. It's a metaphor for doing better, things better. Do you, do you want to be all grumpy like your dad? He said. The prince shook his head. His caretaker ruffled his hair. 
Gave the kingdoms a try. The prince gr grunted a response, but didn't object, his eyes slowly glimmering. Luigi bumped his shoulders and the two began talking casually once again, as natural as the ocean in... Eb... Ebbing? Ebbing? What the fuck is that word? <laughs> God. Wait, Eb hold up. It's Ebbing. E Ebbing? Ebbing. Ebbing, the Ebbing from the shore. They imagined all the possible adventures they would have. If it weren't for the fact that they were different species, one would assume that they were father and son! Ugh. At least that's what it looked like to Mario and Peach fucking spying. X, 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 X. Alright. Oh, fuck. I gotta speak Italian. <laughs> fratello, fratello, oi Luigi. Thank you. What if, cause, uh, I, I think actually oh, Heisen. I think Heisen knows Italian. What if I just, like, caught him, like, hey man, can you, can you say this real quick for the for the audience? <laughs> <laughs> can you be That's Italian so for three seconds and then I'll just, and just, like, alright, thanks, and just hang up on him? <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> It will be funny. He never had that tea party. Well, yeah, he's, he moved. Uh, rest in peace. You know, we'll just have our own tea party. We don't need that guy. I'm <gasps> the wait, wait, wait. Yeah. When Elf and Sage come down, yeah. we can have a tea yeah. party! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, we did it. Anyway. Let's go. <laughs> Something soft smacked it into Luigi's yeah. head. The green Italian grunted and growled, open his eyes. And groggily, god damn it. Mario stood mere centimeters away from him. Luigi flinched and then shoved his brother's face away. He slowly sat. What do you want? He said, his voice grave. Luigi slapped his shoulder. Come on, we're leaving. Ow, why? Where are we going? Luigi asked while rubbing his eyes. To the snow kingdom. Hurry up and get dressed. Then he ran his hands down his face, ex exasperated. Here, I'll grab your cloak. Luigi bolted upright and kicked the sheets, nearly entangling himself into them. Mario shot him a strange look, almost like he was planning something. The younger twin watched him wearily leave the room. They gave each other narrowed eye looks. In a matter of seconds, Luigi dressed in, in a warm green sweater, the thickest set of pants he could find, and almost three pairs of socks. How cold Luigi imagined it to be in the, in the king... Oh, fuck. How do you pronounce his name? Boreas? He's Boreas. Boreas is mm -hmm. home. He was going to bed. It was four times worse. Might as well minimize the slap he was getting soon. The green man glanced at the door, checking for threats before rushing into the closet. Luigi tilted his head at the sight. Junior was entirely bundled and, and burrowed into blankets. He's, 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 I'm imagining he opens it. He's gonna be swaddled. <laughs> I was imagining like he makes a like a little nest out of like out of, like uh like pillows and blankets and he just like curls up. A little four in the armoire. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> little baby. The only way he could tell the little he could tell the little guy was because his snout was peeking out. Man, he wished he had a camera. It would make an adorable lock screen picture. Oh wait, he doesn't have a phone anymore. So adjusting. He stepped forward and patted his snoot. The prince snorted, then slowly peeked out of his blanket cave. What? Hmm? Well, just like Luigi, he's not a morning person. The human reached inside and pulled him out, gently holding him with, on, onto his feet. Junior yawned, expelling some smoke through his nostrils. Luigi looked up. You remember your way back to the kitchen? Yeah. You remember all the hidey places? Mm-hmm. Luigi sighed in relief. The young man patted his head. I'll be a few days, at most, I promise, he said. I'll be back once your father is all situated. Junior sleepily nodded, crawling back into the blanket. Tell Dad I said hi. The man in green helped him burrow back in. Junior fell back asleep in a matter of seconds. Luigi quickly exited the closet and then left his room. He quickly made his way downstairs and beelined it to the throne room. It was the only logical place Peach would be in. A lot of energy was going around. The servants were hurriedly running and entering rooms at random. Luigi wrung his hands, almost feeling the cold. 
One would think a guy who was born and raised in Brooklyn would be used to the cold. No, Luigi was the exception. While Mario absolutely loved the cold, the young brother ex expelled, evaded it like the plague, almost going into his own form of hibernation. Getting him out of the house when it was 20, 29 degrees out was like pulling teeth. No, I, I'm fine with that. I was from New Jersey and I fucking hate the cold. So does my dad. He fucking hates the cold too. <laughs> No, fuck you! <laughs> it's not my fault! <laughs> Our weather's weird. <laughs> Luigi reached to open the door, but he did it so for him. Oh. What? <laughs> okay, right. Peach has total control of the castle. Pushing aside his amazement at Peach's ability, he stepped inside him and met with the most hilarious sight. So much so, Luigi instantly dropped to his knees, wheezing and laughing. Mario awkwardly s stood on a black box wearing a very thick orange and blue s snowsuit with a matching hood. One would barely see his face except for the nose, of course. Princess Peach stood by him, sniffling her own giggles. Mario scowled at him. Yeah, yeah, laugh it off. You aren't safe either, Luigi, he said. There was a snark contrast to his demeanor from earlier. Luigi wiped a tear away. You look like- you look like a, the Michelin Man. He snortled. <laughs> oh, the guy that has like a look- <laughs> Okay, I know what he's talking about. <laughs> Mario turned red at the comparison, sending his brother into a f further hysterical. Suddenly, two toads grabbed his arms. Luigi immediately stopped laughing. Now, it was Peach's turn. The princess giggled. We need your measurements, Luigi. You'll be exposed to the cold and I want you to- I want to keep you safe, she said. As soon as she said that, the toads took their measurement tapes and started their tasks. Luigi fought the urge to groan. The tailors worked intently fast, taking a minute to get the information they needed before they scurried off into another room. Luigi watched them go, astounded by the speed of service. So, how exactly are we getting to the Snow Kingdom? he asked. Peach's eye glowed with excitement. Oh, I can't wait to show you! Follow me! The princess grabbed her skirts and darted towards the back of the throne room. The brothers followed her, al although Mario did more slowly be in due to the suit, and stopped next to Peach. She touched the wall beneath the grand, the grand stand, sta God damn it, grand stained glass, and a door suddenly appeared, causing Mario and Luigi to gasp. The princess t t tittered. Yeah. <laughs> Titter before swiftly opening the door and leaving them inside. The room they found themselves took their breath away. Paintings. Wait a minute, is this fucking Mario 64? This is Super Mario 64 where you travel to the fucking worlds by jumping in through paintings. Yep. This is crazy. <laughs> paintings. Beautiful and ex... In Intricate paintings decorated every inch of the room, except the floor. It was a grand area with a glass ceiling. Ever so faintly, one could hear music, like something that would induce nostalgia the moment they heard it. Wow, they know. They're like, yeah, we're bringing out Mario 64 references. Welcome in, chat. <laughs> the pieces of art look familiar to the ones in the main hall with similarly... Similarly... Similarly, inconceivable realistic details. However, they had glowing frames. Luigi could feel the sun from one painting or a gentle breeze from another. The Toastal Princess extended her arms. Welcome to the Great Gallery. And I just love the. Oh, I thought that said Womp Womp as an author's note. It says Whoop Whoop. Oh, <laughs> thank God. What? It's it, that it says no, Whoop Whoop? It, it, yeah, Whoop Whoop. Like the laboratory. Yeah. Do you think we have to- I, we're at 44 minutes, do you think- I can do it. Okay. Let me just get this ad out the way and we're- we're chilling. Is it anything like the ad that you showed me that you got last No. <laughs> okay. No, no. There is an eggplant, but it's the township game. Oh. <laughs> Chapter 11. The queen at last. The sound of trumpeting and chirping pulled the super brothers from the, their stupor. Hold up. Let me get into- Crime reading mode. 
sitting position. <laughs> <He's worried. laughs> no, it's just like me laying on my tummy on a pillow. Yay. King Boreas stood in front of a large blue and white painting, surrounded by penguins. One of them had a crown, similar to the king's, but made of silver. Three smaller avians circled them. They must be his family. King Boreas noticed their presence and welcomed them with a smile. He raised his flippers. The heroes of a decade. Morning greetings to you all. Morning greeting. Morning greetings, King Boreas, he said. The super brothers returned his greetings with a bow. Boreas beamed at them, then turned to the smaller penguin. Gentlemen, this is my wife, Dinara. The silver-crowned hen chirped and ruffled her feathers. It is an honor to meet you, she said in a soft voice. The chicks around them trumpeted and squawked. Gennaro waddled forward and laughed quietly. These little noisemakers are our children. The royal children let out loud braying noises and flapped their wings. Judging by their parents' calm demeanor, it must be some form of greeting. Boreas chuckled and gestured to the closest one. This is Guinevere, our eldest, he said. The princess stepped forward and bobbed her head. The penguin king and queen introduced the other children. The middle child was Iceland, easily identifiable by her much lighter plumage. And this is Tuxie, our youngest nestling. The baby penguin yelped and hid behind her mother. Mario and Luigi kneeled, smiling at the little one. Tuxie looked up at her parents, finally asking for permission. Her mother nodded and gently nudged her forward. Princess Tuxie rushed to Mario and jumped into his arm, nearly knocking the man over. Her siblings joined them in the tackle. The Snow Rulers and Princess Peach laughed at the scene, amused by their behavior. Mario gently lift, lifted the baby penguin. She's totally adorable, he said. Tuxie chirped and flapped her foot flippers. Luigi yelped, Mario, you can't just lift a princess. What if you drop her? He whispered uh, through his teeth. Why not? You always do it with a certain <clears throat> prince, and I don't see you worrying about that. <laughs> Luigi's face reddened. Were they spying on him? He made a mental note to reprimand his brother over that later. Mario smirked at him, once again giving him the I know more than you do look he had this morning. Peach stepped forward. Well, now that we are acquainted with the royal penguin family, I think we should head to the Snow Kingdom, she said. Toastwood has informed me that the last of the troops have arrived. Then let us make haste. Children! The penguin princesses stopped running around them and obeyed their father's orders. They ran back to their mother. Mario put Tuxie down and let the baby penguin go. Queen Janara preened her children before she took them under her wing. She tweeted before grabbing Tuxie and then leaping into the painting. Their bodies vanished in a ripple. The princesses followed shortly after. The super brothers gasped. Boreas looked at Princess Peach. Thank you for having us, Princess Peach. May the stars shine upon you, he said, then jumped through the painting. Princess Peach put her hands over her hips. Oh, oh, yeah, put her hands over her hips. Come on, Luigi. It's your turn at becoming this Michelin man, she quipped. I can inform you of your assignments there. Luigi slumped his shoulders and groaned. Mario snickered beside him, and so they exited the great gallery and entered another room, where Luigi was also put into the awkward snowsuit. Brothers were handed supply packs filled with clothes, medicine, and other vital necessities. As they geared up, Peach informed them of their mission. The Koopa army had been transported overnight using Toad Town's warp system. It was time consuming, but they managed. Luigi and Mario would assess the damaged areas, which were mainly the gates and eastern section of the Snow's capital. Furthermore, the brothers were were to write detailed progress on the repairs as well as Bowser's behavior. Because any trouble, they were authorized to subdue him and ask for aid from the lo uh, ask for aid from the local defense force. With instructions clear and ready to roll, the brothers returned to the gallery. Luigi apprehensively approached the painting, feeling a familiar knot of anxiety. However, Peach quickly unraveled it. Don't worry, Luigi. This is much more pleasant than a warp pipe, she said. Let's go. In his usual devil may care attitude, Mario leaped through the painting. The green plumber bid the princess goodbye, sighed, and followed his brother. Porca merda! 
I don't know if I said that. No, anyway. that sounded very confident, so I think you did it right. <laughs> Here, what does it I rolled, say? I feel like I rolled my R too much, but... What does it say? It says, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I knew that second part. Wow, of course you know the curse words. Well, mierda is like the same thing for Spanish. Oh, really? There's like an I in there. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Uh, there, yeah, no, the Latin beat. Uh, the Arctic cold slept Mario like a semi-truck. He landed on the icy ground softly, then immediately started shivering and rubbing his arms together. Dulce madre de Cristo, it's cold. If you want to know, it's like sweet mother of God or sweet mother of Jesus. Or sweet mother of Christ, if you want another one. It's cold. He heavily underestimated the temperatures. Mario has to remember that Brooklyn never gets below zero. Mario stopped stopped his teeth clattering and uh, chattering and looked around, his breath pitching at the sight. Everything around him was composed of undulating sheets of ice. Faint light streamed from above. Before him stood a winding path, blanketed by snow. White crystals illuminated the circular area. Mario gently took off his hood, mesmerized. It was beautiful. The gentle breeze blew through the tunnel, creating a soft whistle. Mario took a deep breath, relishing in the crisp, clean, relishing in the crisp, crisp, clean air. He had always wanted to go ice canyoning, but could never afford it. Now look at him, having the ice adventure of a lifetime and serving the royal family. Mario's list of positives of their stranding he just kept growing and growing, visiting and exploring beautiful kingdoms, gold, helping citizens in need, night. Never having to worry about some landlord haggling them for money or living in a crowded condition? Hell yeah. Mario chuckled slightly. Yeah. Perhaps that warp pipe breaking was a good thing after all. Suddenly, he was interrupted by a girlish scream. Mario whirled around and saw his brother landing on his feet, knees together. Luigi shrunk into his snowsuit, cursing in Italian. The elder twin burst into laughter. It's hilarious to hear him swear, as it's so out of character for him. Mario raised his hand. Ciao, Luigi! He shouted. His voice echoed through the tunnel. Nope, no, nope, fuck this. I'm going back. <laughs> Luigi turned around and ready to jump, but Mario grabbed him by the backpack. Come on, Luigi, we have work to do. Luigi tried to reach for the painting again, but Mario yanked him back, rolling his eyes. He knows Luigi hates the cold, but... No one would think their mission would override that. With his eye, he pulled Luigi through the tunnel. The brothers walked through the tunnel, the clicking of their feet, and Luigi's teeth chattering resonated through the hall. Mario could faintly hear chirping and braying. Guards must be nearby. He started walking faster, despite Luigi's protest not to. As they continued forward, Mario remembered everything Peach told him about the kingdom. The two, the two talked quietly. But yeah, the two talked quite when when Luigi was having that terrible fever. Fever. He remembered learning about that monument, the monumental gates of ice that protected frigid metropolis, the cool, cool castle, and other important locations. He hoped they're still standing. Damage reports indicated that a massive section of the gates was melted away by Bowser. Parts of the palace had been melted as well. For the sake of the citizens' well-being and, and theirs, he hoped they could fix this. Stars know what the peng penguin folk are fe were feeling. Mario and Luigi reached an exit and found themselves outside. However, the outside was, was a stark contrast to the ice cave behind them. The glacial gate stood in ruin before them. Craters on the icy floor littered the village. Once made of bricks, cabins sat in destroyed heat. Chunks of ice and crystals were were slayed through the capital like shattered glass. Mario stepped forward, stupefied. The destruction was shocking to see in person. He heard Luigi gasp beside him. The excitement he felt was replaced by anger. How could someone destroy such a beautiful place like this and scare its innocent citizens? He looked at his brother and noticed his lip was, his lip was quivering. This is horrible. That is an understatement to hear Luigi. They turned their heads to a new voice. A, peng a penguin with navy feathers stood up to their right. An avian adjusted the spear on his back and saluted. Normally, 
and give a warm greeting and regale you with the wondrous tales of my home, but he turned to look at his broken home. Mario shook his head. No, we understand. The guard bowed his head in gratitude. Thank you for understanding. My name is Isaac. I'm going to be your attendant. Luigi blew into his hand. Are we going to see the king? he asked. Sadly, no. An emergency has come up and the king has to attend to it. Found the penguin. I was instructed to give you a tour of the cool, cool castle before you set off to the site. The twins snorted and just for Isaac to continue. They followed the, the soldiers through the, through the side of the mountain and walked down a set of stone stairs. Wait, what? As they turned the corner, the mountain transitions into a tower, then into a full-blown castle with domed ceilings. More white crystals illuminated the building, giving it a, giving it a diamond-like appearance. Mario shielded his eyes. What's that glowing stuff near the towers? He asked, pointing a gloved hand to an odd yellow, uh, to an odd yellow glow floating around. I thought looked up. Ah, star magic. Our power star is reconstructing the palace. The penguin waved a flipper dismissively, almost like it wasn't that impressive. Couldn't you use the star to fix the gate? asked Luigi. If only it were so easy, as I stated, while crossing his wings. Since the castle is the power star sanctuary, its power is strongest. However, due to the massive size of the glacial gates and the harm caused, it would take quite some time. But we need the gates now. They protect us from the harsh winds. I just waddled away with the dejected with a dejected expression. Mario gave his brother a saddened look before pulling up his hood and resuming walking. The attendant opened a door and ushered them in. The mushroom champion stared in awe at the pillars of solid ice. Even more impressive, despite the entire building being frozen, the temperature seemed to taper off a little bit. Luigi tapped his foot on the floor, slightly scratching it with his, with his shoe. Mario's eyes widened. The cool, cool castle was carved out of a humongous glacier. Rather than hunkering down underground to escape the wind, the penguin folk turned the Arctic tundra turned the Arctic tundra into their favor. Processing how long that must have taken, the many trials and errors they underwent before they perfected their home was mind was mind boggling. The thoughts were somewhat inspirational, even despite their size and mostly passive nature. The kingdom fought for its place. His fist slowly clenched into a determined fist, his mind entering game mode as he analyzed for possible damages and began formulating solutions. He half-heartedly listened to Izoz as he explained the layout. Somewhere below them were the throne room, the star sanctuary, and storage room. The room they were on was the living quarters, and above was the observatory. Each room was easily accessed by a red door. More snow citizens waddled through each hall, stripping among, among eh. <laughs> Excuse me. Stripping amongst each other as they carried out their tasks. Many stopped in their tracks to look at him in fear. Mario stood up straight. A smile hidden beneath his mustache. He was unaware that Luigi was trying to disappear further into his snowsuit as he shyly waved. Moving away from the admirer. Isaac led them to a room by the end of the hallway. These are your pri private quarters for your time here. If you need something, please ring a bell. Uh, please ring the bell. That won't be necessary right now. Mario swiftly went inside and dropped a large pack onto a corner. Come on, Weege, let's get started. Luigi grumbled something before placing his pack neatly on the bed. Isaac smirked. Taking the initiative, I had respect. Mario hummed, then fixed his glove. They wouldn't be working on anything today, but he wanted to be ready. In case bad in case Bastardzilla comes <laughs> in case Bastardzilla tries to pull anything. Some part of him hopes he does, so he could have a legitimate reason to punch him. He looked at his brother, who was now trembling in fear rather than the cold. Mario wrapped an arm around his brother for comfort and warmth and fo followed Isaac down another set of stone stairs. Long drapes of white cloth hung from the ceiling, gently swaying with the wind. There must be honorary flags of some sort. They walked down another hallway and out the front gates of the castle. 
As they traversed the capital, several citizens came by to watch them. Mario tipping his hat at them and smiled, receiving honks and braids, what he hopes is gratitude. He's still learning Penguin talk. He walked with an air of confidence, doing everything he could, he could to ease the people with his presence. All of Snow Kingdom was looking at them for aid, and the Red Hero would, will not let them down. Mario gathered his emotions and looked forward. After a few minutes of traveling, they arrived, they arrived at the army's campsite. Mario had to, had, I, my brain's losing it. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> do mine too. I can do it, I can do it. Okay. Mario had to, had to take a step back, shocked slightly. Large ships with metal propellers instead of sails towered over them. Their, their frames made of oak, wood, and steel. Black banners with the red insignia of Bowser's face glittered with the wind. Networks of scaffolding lined the walls as Koopas, Goombas, and other darkling creatures walked al along them. Crates of tools and blocks of ice lurked nearby. Mario narrowed his eyes as he noticed a large spike shell in the distance. Eyes out stopped in his tracks. This is far as I go, heroes. His voice quivered, with a flipper reach for his beer. Luigi gently nudged him back. Uh, we'll, we'll take it from here. Isos did not hesitate to retreat. Mario stomped forward, not even waiting for Luigi. Enemy soldiers stopped their work, sending death glares their way. The Red Hero was not phased by their show of anger. They brought this upon themselves. Their lucky Luigi bucked for them and asked for compassion. Otherwise, they would all be going home with no king. No prince, and no royal advisor. So, Mario ignored the looks of reproach and stopped a few feet away from Bowser. His royal advisor glanced over his shoulder, then did a double take. He tapped Bowser's arm with a sneer. The guard with a spiky blue shell also turned. Mario became wary of this. He vaguely recalled this particular soldier, fast and unpredictable. The couple would swoop down from the skies and give away their position. Seeing him fly in the distance burned eat a sense of dread to Mario. Slowly, the Koopa King turned around with his fangs bared. You. Mario. Nice to see you too, asshole. <laughs> Bowser's eyes turned into splits as he took the threatening step forward. Mario gritted his teeth and clenched his fist. In the blink of an eye, the blue shell Koopa stepped between them and raised his fist, tapping his chest. Luigi grabbed his brother. Turning back to the king. What are you doing? He started it. Luigi glared at him. Mario, we are here to keep things uh, we are to keep things civil. Just tell him we're here for the inspection and leave it at that. The two brothers argued amongst themselves in their native tongue, unaware of the approaching king. Suddenly a clawed hand appeared between them and pushed Mario away, almost causing him to fall down. Luigi looked up and was met with a scaled chest. Bowser glared down at him. <laughs> you. I'll talk to you. <laughs> this, this, the scale chest? Why is he looking at you know? He's... Sorry. He, he, he looked up in his mouth with a scale chest. I thought he was just looking what? at his chest. My bad. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I said can't I was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mario steady to stand. What? You heard me. I'll only talk to your brother. Luigi's hands trembled. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bowser picked him up and blew it by the scruff of his head and blew smoke out of his nostrils. Luigi wrinkled his Luigi wrinkled his nose. The Koopa King put a hand on his hip, giving him a once over before nodding his head and walking away. I think we see what these six wrinkled. comments are. Why don't I imagine oh. being all <laughs> I'm sorry I'll read one comment. <laughs> Why do I imagine Bowser being all zesty with a hand on his hip? Death emoji. <laughs> okay, you can continue. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> the last comment. Gay, gay, homosexual, <laughs> gay. <laughs> That's funny, but where? <laughs> They're not. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. They're you can call it gay. That's like someone else I know. Who is that? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Luigi's feet dangled as Bowser carried down the road. Occasionally commenting on the infrastructure or a damaged section. He had an air of disinterest in everything. The fact that he did this, did this, it has not quite kicked in. Okay, that makes sense. 
It'll take time for someone as stubborn and hot-headed as the Koopa King to realize his mistake. And it was natural for him to see this more as an inconvenience than... As he thought of this, the man in green also considered asking the king to put him down, but couldn't gather the courage to do so. Luigi can walk by himself. However, being carried like this was interesting. Huh. So this is what kittens feel like when they're dressed. Also, Luigi highly doubts Bowser will listen to him. That enough for you, Greeny? Luigi looked up and flinched at the sound of the voice. He looked nervously at the three pairs of eyes staring at him. Kamek glared daggers at him through his now fixed glasses. He can't tell. He can't tell if it was because they encased him in ice or because Luigi personally threw his wand into lava. The blue shell, the blue shell soldier was has not said a word since his appearance, and Bowser looked at him with half-lidded eyes, almost like he was going to fall asleep. Luigi felt, um, yes. To be honest, he only half listened. Bowser's eyes lit up. Good. I have pinkiness off my tail. He growled. He put Luigi down, and keeping a hand on his shoulder, the king kneeled down. Where and how is my son? He asked. Luigi fiddled with his hand. Oh, Junior's fine. He, yeah, he's got everything he needs in the castle, he said. You left him alone? Squawked the chemic. The blue shell made some form of hand signals and growled at Luigi. The human yelped, and the Bowser gently moved his companion back and shook his head. He turned his attention back to Luigi. When can you bring him to me? He asked. A as soon as possible, your highness. He, he is your son, plus he misses you dearly. The king's expression softened at the last part. The Kamek in general also seems to relax. Bowser turned to them and dismissed them with a snort. The two walked away, and Luigi tried to control his trembling, and he hasn't been on a one-on-one -on -one with the king since he gave him Bowser's letters. I mean, since he gave him Junior's letters. Then he had a powerful reason for it. Now, uh, there's nothing that's emotionally stopping them from running away. And he couldn't escape physically because of Bowser's hands. Just bring my boy back, Luigi, who Bowser said, his voice to voice, trail mark, trademark, growl. The human froze at that, baffled by the cordial turn of his tone, even more so. He used his name, no nickname, it was interesting to say the least. Luigi wondered what the, what the consequence could, ah, what the consequence could such a thing hold. I know what it could hold. Him being Nothing. gay. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Alright, well, how do you feel about this? Great, amazing. Show stopping. 10 out of 10. I love it. It's gay, I love it. <laughs> and it's a slow burn, which apparently is something I can't deal with for some reason. <laughs> no, you. all your fix got to be like, like 3,000 words max. Okay, alright. <laughs> Calling me out. The chapters are 3,000 words. The whole thing is in 3,000 words. Sure. <gasps> Did I have you know when I checked this morning, it said 60,000 words. On this thing? Well, oh, I think you meant my fic. Oh. I thought you were making fun of me. You're like, yes, they all had to get together immediately because I, I can't do slow burns or whatever. I just like the slow realization of feeling. Yeah. I, I also really like those type of- I also like fix where it's like, oh, it's cause I love you because I love what my, my son has showed me about you or what my child has told me about you. And plus the way, like, you know, you love and care for, like, one, like, that person's child. It's just like, oh, that's so sweet. I'm crying. Okay, yeah, I, I know what I get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Can I go through the, um... Can I go through the author's note? Oh, right yeah. Quick? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, the author's note. Uh, the author wanted to share, um... The playlist for the song. Uh, hold up. There are a conglomeration of classic rock and other songs that I feel represent these two gay dummies we love. <laughs> love Fool by The Cardigans. Yankee Rose by David Lee Roth. Can take my eyes off, off you by Frankie Valley in the fourth season. Come and get your love by Redbone. 
Everybody Wants to Rule the World by Tia Fears. That's a more. Uh, that's Amore by Dean Martin. September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Hug Me by Pharrell Williams. Bowser's Theme, the metal cover by Richard E.B. A Luigi's Mansion theme. There you go. No, I, I agree with that. No, there's, I, there's other things, but I love it. I, I literally just saw something similar to that with, like, Runkle Stan. So one made a playlist of, like, uh, that yes, people listen I to. And I, yeah. And I'm like, wow, these are very accurate. And they're like, there's a song up here. Very accurate, but I can't show you guys because it's uh, 18 plus thing. I'm like, oh, that's a real good song. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've been uh, I've been down bad a lot this this week. <laughs> yeah. Have... What do you mean? Oh uh, yeah. I do... Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like your tone. <laughs> Anyway, we're about to see if uh, if the if the simping behavior gets to be leaked on here. So, uh, you ready to spin the wheel? Of course. Of course. All right. So, what are you hoping for? Um. Uh, uh. I don't know. Spin. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! That Jesus did something. Yay! We got sold to a gang leader! <laughs> okay, this will be interesting. We're gonna laugh our asses um, off during this, I know it. Um, <laughs> that, that, is, that is something. <laughs> Even though this was like one, one of the first fan fictions I've ever read on Wattpad, I don't think I can do a straight face during this. We, I might be making fun of this thing throughout the entirety. <laughs> With no remorse. Hey. No remorse. God, yeah. a little remorse. Someone probably worked hard on it. Yeah, you know it has a sequel. I don't think the sequel ever got finished, though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I know how it ends. I just forget. Like, how the fuck did it? What? How did it happen? You know? It's it's like that one song, like, "Cause Mama, I'm in love with a criminal." Mm-hmm. Britney. Yeah, yeah, and then and then it turns from that to like partners in crime, you know. Some freaky kinky shit happens. I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, I don't I don't remember much of this thing. <laughs> I remember the beginning part that I described to you, and you're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that's what happened." <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, so we're both gonna be miserable during this. <laughs> No, miserable is a strong word. Morally shocked? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for joining, Jolene. I highly appreciate it. No problem. Yeah, you got to, you got to read about Bowser being gay. <laughs> and it was kind of awesome. <laughs> Anyway, there's a there's a playlist on screen with all the other Wattpad book club readings that I've done, including one of them that's also on screen of the last one that I did on the channel. So check all that shit out. Uh, Jolene, do you have any final words of wisdom? Uh, no, no words of wisdom. I'm just thinking I'm real tempted to read this, like to, to you know, get it. No, I don't blame you. If yeah, you do. read more of it on my own. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> Oh, thank god. <laughs> I'm gonna read so much of it. Yeah, um, we're, next time it lands on Bowie's, you're like, I finished the fact. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, be funny. But anyway, my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye!